In this video, I'm going to be installing a Demplex Revolution 20-inch electric log set. Find out how, coming up next. What's going on, guys? Kendall here for Renos for Pros and Joes, helping you simplify the renovation and remodeling process. On this channel, we do renovation tip and strategy videos, as well as hands-on product tool and gear reviews like this one. In today's video, I'm going to be installing a Demplex Revolution electric log set along with a fireplace curtain mesh. This is gonna be a basic fireplace makeover. As you can see, we don't have our mantle up in the background, but one thing that can greatly increase the appeal of your fireplace is to have a log set. And in some situations, it's not practical to be able to install a gas insert and sometimes it's also not practical to be able to use a fireplace or have a fireplace that is gonna allow you to have the, the capabilities of burning wood. So in the fireplace behind me, we've already installed the power necessary for the electric log set. And so there's nothing else to do other than to jump right into the installation. So let's jump into it. Okay guys, this one's gonna be pretty straightforward because what comes in the box is pretty much plug and play. So, we'll flip this thing open so you can see what's in here. Here's our clear panel here, which we'll get to here in a moment. Owner's manual, remote, and styrofoam. So the unit is actually in the box, pretty much ready to go. So we can pull it out like this, sit that down there. Let me grab some scissors. Okay guys, this is the log set. Let me hold it up so that you can see it. This is just styrofoam packing on here that I'm gonna cut off, but let me see if I can zoom in. The power button for it is actually here on the front. So this button right here, I'm not sure if you can see that, but there's a button here that gives you power. Then the second button is for heat. And then the third button adjusts the light and I'm not sure what this fourth button is for. So let's first cut our straps off here. And this is what the unit looks like, okay? So That's just a label that says, do not lift here. Okay guys, so even though this is, looks like it's metal, the majority of the housing here is plastic. There's a box on the bottom, which is the heater. If I spin this around to the back, you can see it. So if I spin it around to the back, you can see the portion of it that's on the bottom here is metal. Let me put my hand underneath it so that you can so I can better demonstrate it. So that's metal. This is plastic, okay? And the logs are plastic also. Okay guys, let's get this thing installed. But one more note that I wanted to add, the button that I was unsure about is actually the button that controls the brightness of the lights. So you've got two buttons that are involved with the lighting. One turns it from flickering to solid to off, and the other one controls the overall dimness and brightness of the, the flame. And so that's what that bottom button is. So let's get this thing popped in here. As I said before, you do need to have an outlet already pre-installed inside your fireplace for this to work. So I've already got mine installed, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop mine in. Making sure to pick it up from underneath. I'm 
I get mine centered in here and get it situated. I'm gonna do a better job of hiding my cord later on. I just wanted to be able to get this installed just to get it working for you guys first. So it's gonna be kind of ugly initially because my cord is hanging down a little bit. Okay, so there, that was it. <clears throat> But one thing I do want to show you with this unit is that right now it's just sitting in here and if we turn it on you will see that these metal pieces are on a spool, like on a spinner, and they spin and they actually create the reflection from the light that is uh, shining against it. But it does not function the way it's intended to without installing the plastic insert. So let me show you that also. So I turn it on like that, and if you see that, <clears throat> you see that it's lit up across the back here with, the, with your orange, and it's lit up here with orange as well. And then you have these pieces here that are spinning the little metal pieces. This is not the complete install. You have to install the plastic insert over this, which is what gives you the illusion of fire. So let's do that step next. This is the insert piece that I was referencing. Uh, it's clearly labeled and tells you that this is the front. You can remove this once you've got it installed. And there's actually two slots, <clears throat> which I'll show you on the back side of this, where this piece inserts. Very easy to install. So if we look here, there's a small slot here, and there is a small slot here. So you kind of have to bend the unit slightly to get it in there because as you can see it's kind of a convex shape. You can see that it's kind of going like this. So let's do that. got it in there. So now if I bring you back in you can now see that illusion of fire. Okay? But we're not going to stop there guys. I know what you're probably thinking. Okay, that's great, but what's up with the plastic and the way that that looks? Aha! And that's why we're going to be installing the fireplace mesh curtain. That's going to give us the overall look that we're going for. We're going to have our fire. Um, it's going to be electric powered. And then we'll also have the curtain to give us just a little bit of cover so that you can't see all the inner workings of our electric fireplace. So let's jump into that step next. Okay guys, so in order to move on to this next step, you are gonna have some additional supplies and tools in order to complete this. So the first thing you're gonna need is going to be a set of fireplace mesh curtains. These are gonna come in different sizes. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you take measurements of your existing fireplace opening, the width particularly, as well as the height, because you wanna make sure that the curtains that you buy are gonna be tall enough to reach down to 
near the bottom of your opening and you're going to want to make sure that they're wide enough to span the entire distance from left to right width wise okay and with with doing that you also want to keep in mind that the panels come in sets of two so the, the width divided by two you're going to want to make sure that your panels are at least the width um, of that span or as close to that width as possible without being short so it's okay to be a little bit wider but you don't want to be short because the curtains won't close and conceal everything that's back behind the curtain so you guys know how this works so you've got that piece of it the additional thing that you're going to need in order to do this install is going to be the rod that the curtain is mounted to which is known as a balance and in most situations the balance is sold separately from the curtains so this is an adjustable balance um, they come in different sizes so you just want to make sure that the balance that you buy is going to be um, able to reach the width that you need it to so if you can see here i'm sliding this balance what one side came off both sides come off but they they slide so that you can adjust it to the width that you need. So the next step that you wanna take is to measure the width of your fireplace opening. And then you want to mark where that center line is because we're gonna to have to center the balance. So when I take my measurements, my span is 40 and a half inches, which means that my center is going to be 20 and a quarter inches. So I've got that here, and I'm going to mark that off and hold this tight. I'm gonna mark it here. All right, so now I've got that. On the top side, of this adjustable balance, you will see that there are three holes, one, two, three. So this is gonna be the one that's in the center. This is gonna be dead center in your fireplace. The other thing that you wanna keep in mind is when you mount this balance, let me show it to you from the end or show you from this end. You can see here, this is the front face of it that gives some coverage to the to the curtain loops once it's actually installed. So you're going to have this side out and you want to make sure that this portion here at this angle is going to be flush with the front of the fireplace. So you don't want it to have, you don't want it to have it sitting back behind the brick. You don't want to have it extended out too far in front of the brick. You just want to have it completely flush. So you want it to basically go straight down here. The next thing that you're going to need is going to be a drill and drill bits because you're going to have to drill holes into your brick in order to mount this balance. And for that, you're going to need a masonry bit. It's the appropriate size. In your instructions, it should tell you what size you're gonna need for your install. So I won't get into those specific details on this one because you may end up with a different one. If you wanna get more information about the balance that I'm using here, the link is in the description to the article on the website which will give you links to that information as well as links to the fireplace that's also featured in this video. So you also need a bit that will drill through metal in the event that you have a lintel or up here above your uh, brick fireplace. And that's basically the steel L-shaped bracket that is running from side to side here, um, concealed by the brick, but it's actually allowing the brick to remain here at this header, essentially on the top of the fireplace. You can't see it, but it's definitely here. So you have to make a, make a, make a note of that, take close, pay close attention to determine whether or not you have that on your fireplace. If you do, you are going to need the masonry bit, I'm sorry, the, the metal bit in order to drill through that. So the next step is actually to go ahead and put your balance in place. And then we're going to mark off the locations for our holes. So I've already marked off mine at 20 and a half, or 20 and a quarter, I'm sorry. And then I'm making sure that I have it flush here and I'm lining up 
everything with my hole in the center. I want to make sure that I've got this the way that I want it before I start marking. Make sure that I'm consistent here with my setup. So. after you mark there's nothing wrong with going back and making sure that you've got it exactly the way that you want it okay. so we've got that Always want to make safety a priority, guys. So take care of your, take care of yourself. I'm gonna start by saw that there were just shavings falling initially and then all of a sudden when you saw dust you know that you've gotten all the way through the steel and you're getting into the mortar so definitely stop as soon as that happens also be aware that there's little shavings that are going to fall when you do this so you're going to need to make sure that you clean up Make sure to clean up all of your shavings and dust. Now that I'm good and dusty and dirty, screws in my kit come with a flat head, but they're always difficult to turn, so I try to use a quarter inch bit like that to drive them. Oh, it's already screw on there. Now we need to mark our locations on our side walls.
Now we're gonna jump back to the masonry bit. I'm already covered in dust. extension on your there we go balance is in what's going on guys I'm back it's a different day and I'm back to finish up this fireplace install. I've got the valance installed and now it's time to install the curtains. And I just wanted to quickly show you what the curtains look like. This is one panel here. This is the second panel. Just kind of a standard mesh here. As you've probably seen a million and one times. That's what it, what it looks like. And it's got some rings here on top so that you can hang it up. And then these are the, this is one of the bars or one of the rods that you use to install it. So that's pretty straightforward there. I'm gonna go ahead and install them, but before I do that, I wanted to mention one more thing to you. Before you decide to order your curtains, make sure that you get, take good measurements of your opening on your fireplace. Because if you can, it's gonna be much more beneficial for you and easier on the install if you're able to get curtains that are the exact height of the opening. So on, on my install, my fireplace opening was a little bit shorter than the curtains were long. So I had extra curtain and I had to modify these in order to make them work, um, which was a huge added step and took tons of tons of time and it was really, really tedious. So um, I would recommend avoiding that if you can by taking good measurements and trying to find a set that will match the height and width of your exact opening um, or very close to it. Um, in my particular situation, I couldn't because the panels just didn't come in that height. And so I had to move forward with what I, with what I could find, uh, knowing that I'd have to modify them, which I did. So. Um, just wanted to share that with you before we go any further because it was a huge pain. So I'm gonna show you how these panels are installed onto the rod here next. These hooks on the top here, the rings you can see are spaced out equally, except on one end you have two that are close together like this. And this one is designed, this end is designed to go on this end, which are, there's a, uh, a bent end here, and that's the end this is designed to go on. So um, you're supposed to skip 
the very, very first loop on these two that are close, you skip that first loop and then you feed the rod through all of your other loops. So I'm doing this, I'll raise it up so you can see it. So I'm feeding it through all these loops like so. You're gonna wanna hold this in place so they don't slide off while you're working with it. So as you can see, I've got all of them on the rod except for this very, very first one. And the very first one is designed to go around the end here, which keeps the whole thing from sliding. So um, just as a, from a practical standpoint, this is gonna be, this is an end that touches the brick on this side. And then this is the part that's actually gonna slide. So you're hooking in behind this. This is basically a stop that prevents the whole curtain from shifting over this way um, when you pull this tight. So you can, you can pull it tight without having to worry about this end sliding. So I've got this one done. And I'm going to do the other one the same way so that we can get these installed on the other side. After doing so much modification work on this curtain setup, I'm really anxious to see how this is gonna turn out. We really have lucked out here because it's, the sun's going down or it's actually already gone down. So this should look pretty cool and give you a pretty good idea of what this is gonna look like if you decide to go with this type of setup in your property. So one more added thing, as you can see I installed this in here kind of upside down. This is the stop and the stop is designed to go um, up like this. So um, this is gonna be the panel and rod that's gonna be on the left side. Um, I still have my loop here that goes in there. And then now I'm just going to pop these in here. Uh, and hopefully we don't have any issues with this. Because if we do, I'm going to scream. All right. Let's see here. There we go. Wanted to make sure he didn't cut them too short. So that's one side. And then as I'm putting these in here, there's a little place here for them to go on here. Struggling a little bit more on this side. Okay. So we've got that one in there now. All right. Got that on there. One thing we've got left now to do is to put the little handles on there, but I'm gonna come back and do that here in a second. Let's go ahead and get this fireplace reinstalled so we can see what this looks like. Set this in here. Like I said, guys, I'm gonna come back and tighten up, tidy up my cord and everything here in a minute. But right now, I'm just gonna get it out of the way. Let's get our little panel in. Remember this? So we're gonna pop this in. All right. 
got this thing in here. Let's scoot it back. Got it. Now this unit also has a remote. Which I haven't tried out yet, so here's the little remote here, and it's got one of these deals where you just pull out the little plastic in there. Well, let's see what we've got here. Ready? Let's try it. Three, two, one. Uh-oh. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so let's back this thing up. Move it over see what it looks like. What do you guys think? I think it's pretty cool. still kind of see the outline of the little panel in there. If you've got a very deep fireplace, then this will probably look even more natural. Um, I also wanted to add that this particular unit has got a heater on it. So this unit has a heater and you can also adjust the brightness of it. So let's see what happens if we, there's a light around in the back of it. I don't know if you can see that. Move the camera a little bit closer for this demo so you guys can don't worry about seeing me. Let's just focus on the unit here. There you can see that. Let's turn the light up on this thing in the back. You guys can see that, but that's an additional light in the rear of the fireplace. So you can turn that off. See it off, on, off, on, off. Okay, now let's try adjusting the Flame. I guess we could make the flame different. So that's the flame off. Okay, off and on for the flame. This thing's got five buttons on it. So in case you guys are wondering what this looks like, this is what I'm working with here. Power button, and then there's four other buttons. We've got the on off button. We've got the light button that turns on the rear light on it. We've got another button here that Looks like it's changing the brightness of it. You can see the difference in the logs. They become a little bit more bright. In conclusion, guys, I'd say that this unit looks pretty good when it's dark outside. Um, when it's when it's light outside, you can clearly see the panel in the rear of the unit. But when it's dark, or if you've got a deeper fireplace, 
probably not going to be um, that much of an issue. So as you can see, it's it's doing everything it's supposed to do. It looks like fire. Um, one added thing that I wanted to share with you, this is the 20 inch unit. This unit comes in more than one size. So just wanted to show you um, measurements of my space so that you can determine whether or not this one's big enough for you or not. This unit or my opening is 41 inches wide. So this is a pretty wide opening, 41, 41 inches wide exactly. And then the height of my opening, which I'm measuring from the floor here all the way up to the bottom of the top of the opening, not to the valance. I'm not measuring to the valance, I'm measuring to the actual top of the opening and it is 29 and three quarters inches tall. So 29 and three quarters inches tall by exactly 41 inches wide. And this is the 20 inch unit, so you can see what that looks like inside of an opening, fireplace opening of this size, just as a point of reference. I'll give you another shot of it this way so you can judge a little bit better if you feel like that's the right size for you or not. So you pack that thing out a little bit like that. And guys, I would pan out a great deal so that you could see what this unit looks like, but I've got a ton of other stuff sitting here in this room. not going to look as good. So here we are with our fireplace. Okay guys, that about does it for this one. For additional information on this electric log fireplace unit or the mesh curtain setup, look for additional information in the description box below. I'm going to turn the lights down for you to get a better idea of what this unit looks like as we roll out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.